Okay guys, let's build the greatest drill charging station ever. I will make some mistakes, I will fix those mistakes, and at some point I'll throw in a little surprise. First thing we'll do is break down the plywood using my trusty Craig AccuCut. Then I'll move over to the table saw to break it down a little further. Then over to the miter saw. Okay, let's cut some angles. You have to use your little wixie gauge or else your angles will never be right. Your first angle is very, very simple. We've all done it a thousand times. So the next one is a little more involved, but simple nonetheless. I have to cut this at 52 degrees. So obviously the saw will only go to 45, but there is a way to do it. First thing you want to do is rip down a 2x4, get a nice square edge on one side, and then bring that all the way up to the blade to where the blade just barely touches the edge of it. Next you want to attach the board that you're going to cut to the 2x4. Now I'm using pin nails here, but you could use double sided tape if you wanted to. Then you just rip it down and make sure to use a push stick. And next is pocket holes, and everyone knows that the only real woodworking is pocket screws. Changed my mind. I'm going to put a quarter inch chamfer on the rails. This will be a little more comfortable for the drills. It's kind of like a warm blanket on a cold winter night, except for a drill. The last thing to cut is the little openings in the sides, and I've never been good with a jigsaw, so don't judge me. Anytime I cut plywood, I like to just grab some sandpaper and break all the edges down a little bit, get all the burrs off of them, it just kind of makes everything go together a little bit nicer. Well there's everything. Can you tell that it's the greatest drill charging station ever? First thing I'm going to do is build the hangers. And I'm going to find the center on the rails and then I'm going to attach them to the uprights first with brad nails then I'm going to countersink some screws in. I'm not going to use wood glue with this that way if I ever want to change it, move it around, I can do so without any problems. Next I'm going to lay out where all of the hangers are going to go on the bottom shelf. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to attach them first with brad nails and then some countersunk screws. No wood glue. Next I'm going to attach this upright uh, just in the center with pocket hole screws and wood glue. So next I'm going to put the left side on and I'm going to use some wood glue and some pocket hole screws. And this is where I realized that I had screwed up. I'll get back to that in a little bit. And this is the second shelf, middle shelf thingy. First of all, I'm going to lay out the center where I know where to put it on the upright. Then I will lay out the height for the other side. Then I will countersink some screws and use some pocket screws and wood glue. And now the back box thingy. Honestly guys, I, I just make this stuff up as I go. And now the third shelf, top shelf. Okay, so the angled shelf. There's a lot of shelves on this thing. But this is where your chargers are going to mount. I'm just going to attach this with some brad nails. I didn't want the pocket holes seen from the front and I didn't want to screw it in from the side or anything so some glue and brad nails will be fine. Okay so I wanted this switch on here but I didn't want it mounted on the outside. I, I didn't think I would like the way it looked. So I wanted it mounted on the inside so I'm building these brackets putting these side pieces on here with some glue and brad nails. Then I'm going to put a piece on the top to screw 
the switch into. Now the piece on the bottom, I couldn't do that because I wouldn't be able to get the switch in because of the power cords. So I'm using some screws to, uh, where I can take it on and off if I needed to or just to get it in. Once that's done, I will just mount the switch with some number eight screws. And there you have it. It is flush mounted and to me looks a lot better than it would look mounted on the outside. Now I'm just going to mount the right side the same way as the left with pocket hole screws and wood glue. Now the top goes in with wood glue and pocket screws. I'm going to install this door here to be able to get to all of the wires and everything. I took a little piece of wood and a squeeze clamp and clamped the little door exactly where I wanted it. Now I'm going to use these small hinges. And it works, just like a door is supposed to. I didn't want to use drawer slides on here. The drawers are so small, I didn't want to lose any more space than I absolutely had to. So I made these little spacers to go on each side just to fill in the gap of where the face frame will be. I put these rails on the outside here. I just used brad nails for now. I did put some pocket holes in the front and the back and it will be screwed into the back piece and to the front face plate. I'm going to go ahead and start putting the face frame on. Since this is shop furniture I didn't use hardwood or anything other than the top piece you'll see it later but I just went with half inch plywood just like the rest of it just to make it easier. I didn't want to bore you guys with showing putting these drawers together. They're just butt jointed and glued and screwed with a board on the bottom. Okay, now the top trim piece. I'm using an old runner. If you've seen some of my other videos, I've actually talked about this before. But it's a runner off of a pallet from my work. I'm just going to cut it to length. Then I'm going to joint one egg, edge on the table saw and then I'm going to run it through my planer and I think it looks pretty good just for an old piece of garbage wood that was going to be thrown away. Let's get the switch installed. I taped up the front of the switch because I'm going to have to install it before I paint it. It's part of the screw up that I had talked about earlier and with a little wood glue, a few taps from my custom mallet, don't be jealous and some pocket screws. The back is installed. Time for the drawer pulls. I like to use the Craig drawer pull jig. don't remember exactly the name of it, but I'll leave a link in the description. All you have to do is draw center lines, set up your jig where the lines match the little tabs on each side, find your center, Lay the jig down, put your center mark in the little groove, clamp it down, drill your holes, perfect every time. Okay, let's talk about my screw up. When I set the collar up on the bit for my pocket hole jig, I tested it on some scrap, same way that I always do, and it worked perfectly. But, when I started putting this together, it was going through the edges. So, short of just throwing the whole thing away and starting over, which I was not going to do, I ground all the screws down and I'll fill in the holes later. Just for a little extra added strength, I put some pocket screws at each end of the side rails, which I spoke about earlier and at the back of each center rail. Now I'm going to drill a hole with a Forstner bit into the back to get the cord out. And I'm going to cut a little groove in the side so that it will mount flat against the wall. Time to fix my screw up. I'm just going to use Drydex. I've used it for years. It works really, really well. You just got to let it dry good and it'll sand down very nicely. Ah, uh, sanding. I hate sanding. 
Does anyone actually enjoy sanding? If you do, let me know. Just in case you didn't know, wood glue will not stick to paint. So I grab my frog tape here and tape off the edge where my top trim piece will be attached. Now that it's painted, we can start putting everything else on here. So we're going to start with the light and I'm going to hot glue the cord over behind this rail just to keep it hidden. As I'm mounting these chargers, I'm drilling a hole through the angled shelf back all the way to the little opening in the back for the, all of my cords. That way I can hide everything and make it look nice and neat. Just want to thank you guys for watching this long. So for the little surprise that I had promised in the beginning, the first three people that comment, I want these plans, gets a free set of plants. All you have to do is after you comment, email me at cornercreekwoodworking at gmail.com. Let me know if you want the plans for the four or the six. I'll email you a PDF file. All I ask in return is a picture of what you build and an honest critique of the plans. I do not have a CNC yet. Luckily, I know someone who does. So Crystal, if you're watching this, thank you very much. It's perfect. It is exactly what I wanted. So after I fight for 20 minutes to get the tape off of the switch, I can put the paddle on and start getting this drill charging station ready to hang. I am a one man shop, so I attached a board level to the wall at the bottom of where I wanted this drill charging station to hang that I'm going to lay out for my studs. I'm going to countersink a couple of holes. Then all I have to do is hang it up and screw it in. If you guys are getting any value out of this, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the little bell and give me a thumbs up or comment. Let me know how I'm doing. All that's left is to put the drawers in and hang my drills and this project is complete. Guys, I love this thing. All of my cords are tucked away, hidden and easily accessible. So don't pay attention to where I just touched up the paint over the screws, but I, I love this color. And the drawers give me plenty of storage. The top shelf gives me a good place to keep my batteries while they're not on the charger. You, know, you don't want to leave them on the charger all the time. So the basis of this entire build was this light and this switch. The light was just to ensure that I knew that power was going to the chargers and I just thought the switch was kind of neat. I chose to build this a little larger than what I needed right now because everybody knows your collection is going to grow over time. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around to the very end. There is a link in the description to my Etsy page where you can pick up these plans. Click one of these other videos and I'll see you there in a minute.